diseases of cognition are, are some of the most worrying diseases at, at this point in time because our population is aging and so diseases like Alzheimer's and, and Parkinson's and other neurodegenerative diseases um, are you know, it's critical that we develop a better understanding of the brain so that we can treat those diseases. And so that is um, an area where we hope to contribute. One thing that we're really interested in is uh, trying to improve translation. Translation is a, a buzzword right now, actually. But it simply means um, translating uh, research, uh, preclinical research, uh, into the clinic. That translation from preclinical research to the clinic uh, has been problematic in, in neuroscience. Uh, we think that one of the reasons it's been problematic is because the approaches that people take, the methods that are used in preclinical research are very different sometimes from the methods that are used in, in the clinic and in, in clinical research. And one thing that we've been trying to do is to improve those methods and make them more similar um, so that the so that the results will translate more effectively. So let me give you an example of something that we're, we've worked on to try to improve translation from preclinical to the clinic. Uh, most patients, when they're tested on their learning and memory, for example, are tested using computerized type tasks that are very similar to video games. One thing, and when you test a, a mouse model, on the other hand, usually their learning and memory is measured in something like a maze, which is very different to the way that you would test a human. So one thing that we've developed is a device that allows us to test our mouse models on um, virtually the same, and, and in many cases identical tasks to the ones that we test our humans on. So the mice um, have a touch screen, they interact with the touch screen by um, pressing it with their, their nose, they get um, you know, different images on the touch screen and, and we can test their learning and memory in that way. They're rewarded for making the correct choice with strawberry milkshake. Um, if they don't get it right, the lights go out. Um, and so that way we can test our, our mouse models um, on exactly the same tests as our human patients. And we run the lab very much together. I think we each bring slightly different skill sets to the work. So I come from a much more computational and theoretical background. Tim comes from a more neurobiological background. And so I think we have very complementary strengths that allow us to um, sort of, you know, divide things up to some extent. But um, at the theoretical level, we're very uh, compatible. Mm -hmm. So, so all together, it, it works very well. Cambridge is, is, a, is a great place. It's a, almost a a magical place um, uh, and so we weren't thinking about moving but we came to Western for a, a visit and met with loads of people and we were really Im surprised and really impressed I, I think uh, at people's enthusiasm and ambition and uh, what they're trying to do here in, in, in the area of cognitive neuroscience. Western has a lot of um fantastic top-notch molecular level research. It also has this fantastic human level research in, the, in, in robots and, and the imaging and, and brain and mind. And, and where we really fit in is, is in bridging those two levels. And I think that um, it's a really sort of natural home for us here that we're really excited about.